This is the last session, session 13, and we look at cloud computing. Cloud computing refers to applications and services offered over the internet. These services are offered from data centers all over the world, which collectively are referred to as the cloud. This metaphor represents the intangible yet universal nature of the internet. The idea of cloud simplifies the many network connection and computer systems involved in online services. Examples of cloud computing include online backup services, social networking services, and personal data services such as the Apple Mobile Me. This session seeks to explain the concept of cloud computing and also look at the different services available as well as the benefits of cloud computing. At the end of this session, you'll be able to understand the basic concept of cloud computing, be able to differentiate between the public cloud and private cloud, understand the different services provided through cloud computing, and also understand the usage and benefit of cloud computing, not leaving out the challenges that are associated with cloud computing. Concept of cloud computing. Cloud computing is a computing paradigm where a large pool of systems are connected in private or public networks to provide drastically and dramatically scalable infrastructure for application, data and storage. With the advent of this technology, the cost of computation, application hosting, content storage, and delivery is reduced significantly. Cloud computing is a practical approach to experiencing direct cost benefits, and it has the potential to transform a data center from a capital-intensive setup to a variable price environment. Forrester defined cloud computing as a pool of abstracted, highly scalable, and managed computer infrastructure capable of hosting end customer application and billing by consumption. Cloud computing models. Basically, there are three models, cloud computing model. We can talk about the service. We can also talk about the platform. And then we can also talk about the software as well as the infrastructure. So we have the software as a service, we have the platform as a service, and then we also have the infrastructure as a service. For the software as a service, the software is offered to an individual or corporate institution and they tap from it and it's being hosted by a third party. Now the platform as a service it's also another model that could be utilized under the cloud computing, where the platform is given to an individual or a corporate institution, either to host the programs or any other activity on the platform, and is still managed by a third party. The infrastructure as a service is also the third model, where the infrastructure is made available onto an individual or a corporate institution for a fee where the institution can utilize the infrastructure for any for its benefit. So we have the software as a service, we have the platform as a service, and then we also have the infrastructure as a service. So one, we're talking about the software being utilized, the second one, the platform being utilized, and the third one, the entire infrastructure being utilized. And with this, if you are utilizing the infrastructure, you are free from erecting your own infrastructure. Everything will be hosted and paid for. The public and private clouds. Basically, there are three main clouds. We have the public, the private, and then the derivative, which is the hybrid of the two. The public ones are made and managed by a third party. Public clouds are owned and operated by third parties. They deliver superior 
economies of scale to customers as the infrastructure costs are spread among a mix of users, using each, giving each individual client an attractive low cost. So it is hosted and you have different organization and individual subscribing to the public cloud. And at the end of the day, it's, they are built either corporate or individual. With a private cloud, we are talking about a third party trying to erect a crowd within the premises of that organization. And with this, it's a little bit expensive. Private clouds are built exclusively for a single enterprise, unlike the private that are shared. With the private ones, it's built for a single enterprise, but the public ones are shared. They aim to address concerns on data security and offer greater control, which is typically lacking in the public clouds. With the public clouds, because you have so many individuals and organizations tapping to the cloud, sometimes data security is compromised. But with the private one, it is rated by a third party and managed for an individual organization. With this, we even have two main types of the private cloud. We have on-premise private cloud, and then we also have the externally hosted private cloud. The on-premise, it's mounted in the premises of that organization, and then the externally hosted, it's also hosted at a different location, but it's for just that organization. So you can have it hosted in your premise, or you can have it hosted in another premise by a different that is the third party hosting it for you but it's just for the organization and these are the two main types of private clouds the third is the hybrid the hybrid cloud tries to utilize the public and then the private and take the advantages and the disadvantages and marry and merge the two to enhance performance and of course cut down costs so for the hybrid most organization use the hybrid one if they want to ensure security they go in for the private and then also they marry it with the external or the public one which is also cost cutting and that is what most organizations do now now the benefits and challenges of cloud computing there are so many benefits and among the benefits are the reduced cost, you don't need the infrastructure, the storage, the technical know-how, and all that. You only pay and the services will be rendered to you. So relatively, you have reduced your cost by bringing in experts, by getting service, software, and other infrastructure. So cloud computing is helping in this area by reducing cost. Increase in storage. With the massive infrastructure that is offered by cloud providers today, storage and maintenance of large volumes of data is reality. So you are not buying the, the storage device. It is there and you are having access to it and you are paying, of course, for it. So you are not limited at all by space and by size. They are there and you can upload you can use and you can do so many things so increase storage flexibility this is extremely an important characteristic and of course advantage with enterprises having to adapt even more rapidly to the changing business condition spread to the speed to which they deliver is also critical and you have the flexibility Cloud computing stresses on getting applications to market very quickly. And you can have all the flexibility as in the delivery, the acceptance, and different clouds. Now let's look at some of the challenges. Data protection. A third party is hosting your data. How protective are these data? And data security is a very crucial element that warrants scrutiny. 
how safe are your business data, your bio data, your personal data that is being managed by a third party? These are some of the challenges. Again, we can talk about data recovery and availability. If there is a massive attack on the cloud, how are you going to recall, recover your data? In a normal homemade infrastructure, you can rely on your backup. But in the cloud, how are you going to recover data and have it more available quickly as possible? In production environment, operational terms support some of this. Appropriate clustering and fill over. Data replication. System monitoring. Maintenance. Disaster recovery. Capacity and performance management. How are you going to assess all this in the cloud? And it's a very big challenge to cloud providers and users. Management capacities and management capabilities. Despite the multiple cloud providers, the management of platforms and infrastructure is still in its infancy. In fact, we are, most of you are even getting the idea of cloud computing because it's still at its infancy and at the beginning of its arrival. So most people are not aware and it could also affect the management. Regulatory and compliance restriction. There are certain countries, for instance, they will not allow their data to be taken to other countries. And when it happens that way, it means that the crowd should be set in that country. It is a disadvantage to crowd providers. Regulatory and compliance regulations restrictions are all problematic to cloud providers and can be also seen as a disadvantage. Cloud services will demand experts and expertise in distributed services, procurement, risk assessment, and service negotiation areas that, may, that many enterprises are only moderately equipped to handle. And with this, we can say that going in for the crowd and understanding the crowd operation is one of the paradigm shifts in storage services. This is where I end the cloud computing, the 13th session. As I said earlier on, make sure you visit the references and have a thorough reading on the references and I know we'll meet again.